Hi guys, this is your old eco-catastrophist. Uh, staying dry on a rainy day in the end times. Wednesday, no, May 13th, 2015. Just sitting here on this channel, this YouTube channel called The Real News. It is this lefty news channel, which I highly recommend if you're not subscribed to The Real News. Anyway, this is part two of a seven-part interview between Truth Dig editor-in-chief Robert Shear, who's this guy here, and Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Chris Hedges discuss how data collection began as a commercial enterprise that was eventually co-opted by the state. So this is actually Chris Hedges playing the part of the interviewer, kind of a reversal of roles, and interviewing this fellow, Robert Shear. He's a great guy. But So this is Robert Shear describing to Chris Hedges what he learned in his investigation into the NSA. But what I wanted to play you is about a minute and a half of Chris Hedges just summing up the NSA in 90 seconds. So I don't run over my four and a half minute limit to your ADD. Let me get right into actually Chris Hedges uh, summing up what Robert Shearer is saying. And I will put the link on this if you want to investigate this topic further. Take it away, Chris Hedges. But what happens, I mean, in, you know, all of the great writers of totalitarianism have written on mass surveillance, Hannah Arendt being one in The Origins of Totalitarianism, and she says that when you collect data on every single citizen, it's no longer about crime or justice, or it is about having uh, materials so that when you criminalize a certain category of people, you, and Stalin was kind of the master of this, um, you can instantly arrest them because there's always something. And they can exactly do what you've done where you take that rather innocent discussion and twist it to serve the ends of the state. That's the danger of mass surveillance. One of the things in your book is that you, um, uh, I think you chronicle brilliantly, as I've said, uh, you, you know, the apparatus and how it works. Um, and, and yet I would, I would argue with you that we already live in a, co a corporate totalitarianism uh, that has extinguished any uh, idea of democracy. Now, the, the, this security and surveillance is so pervasive, um, and it was, of course, as you said, exposed by Snowden, but it's not implemented because they don't need it. Um, it is used very effectively against those who carry out dissent. We saw it in the Occupy movement. So, for instance, because everyone in Occupy communicated electronically, uh, afterwards, they knew who the engines of Occupy were, and they have gone back and used that data to slap them with felony convictions, usually for crimes they didn't commit, put them on probation for five years, so that they, if they do any kind of activism, they're, they have to serve the sentence and they're locked up, effectively neutralized. So they've, and, and, and I've watched in New York, and I was close enough to the Occupy movement to tell you they went after the right people. We live in a period where we, we don't we haven't we don't have hyperinflation. Uh, you know we're not uh, convulsed by catastrophic effects of climate change yet. Um, uh, but the moment that that comes, the mechanism is in place so that it's just the flick of a switch, isn't it? I mean, is there at, at this point is there really any going back? Well, you'll have to tune in to find Shearer's answer to that question. So you just heard Chris Hedges, well, except for the comment about the, <clears throat> the impending climate change catastrophe getting ready to hit this country in the ass, Chris Hedges sounding a whole hell of a lot like Alex Jones. And I've said before, and I'll say it again, when Alex Jones and Chris Hedges start sounding alike, maybe we should listen but I see I'm wrong, closing in on five minutes, so I better say bye-bye, Birdie, and you can go back to your cute kitten videos now. Bye, guys.